So what was Henry like when he was young? Well, he was considered to be the most talented and accomplished monarch who'd ever reigned. For a start, he was astonishingly good-looking. Contemporaries described him as having a round face, so very beautiful that it would become a pretty woman. And he was also accomplished. Whether it was surpassing all the archers of his guard at archery, playing every musical instrument in the room to entertain a French embassy as a capital horseman or a fine jouster, but also he was charismatic, exuberant, good-natured. Uh, he was described by a Venetian ambassador as being affable and gracious, a man who harmed no one. 50,000 men took up arms against Henry VIII and marched south. Henry talked big, but in fact he only had 9,000 troops. If it had come to battle, 1536 could have been the year in which Henry VIII was deposed. But Henry was lucky. He had a good fixer. The Duke of Norfolk promised the rebels a parliament to consider their concerns and a pardon for their rebellion. The rebels went home satisfied. But Norfolk had lied. Early the next year, no parliament had been called. Fresh revolts broke out. And it was just the excuse that Henry had been looking for to take savage revenge. There's an example from 1559 of the French king dying as a result of a jousting accident. It was not safe. It was very dangerous. It seems really astonishing because, you know, just seeing you guys go so fast, you really go for it, don't mm. you? you know? Yeah, and you can rip pieces of armour off, smash shields to pieces. Those lances will go straight through those shields. You've seen us joust. Now, I think what we'd like to do is give you a little taste of it yourself. So, a bit further up the yard, we've pre prepared something for you, so we're going to give you a chance to have a go at some jousting yourself. I really hope you're kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. Come with me up the yard. Come with me up the yard. Ah! How's that? You're getting good at this. What a job. <laughs> Clothes were designed to conceal and to reveal, but they were designed to conceal and reveal different things to today. So arms were covered down to the wrist, um, the breasts were flattened, the legs were covered, but necklines were very low and the waist was accentuated. Actually, clothes weren't really about sex, they were about status. Law determined who could wear what according to their rank. And to wear this, to look this magnificent, meant that you were someone of great wealth, and rank. To wear this, in fact, was to be a walking status symbol. This is the Chapel Royal at Hampton Court Palace, where the king and his court marked the great occasions, such as the christening of the future Edward VI. The most spectacular surviving feature of the Tudor period is this magnificent ceiling. Henry's buildings say what things like the Holbein picture of him say, which is a sense of his own grandeur. He dressed himself magnificently, he had extraordinary tapestries, he wanted, his, his buildings are a similar symbol of what life should be like for him as a king and what he wanted to say about himself. But then wh why is our image of him so very different? The key to this is one year of his life, a truly terrible year, 1536. For a start, he falls from his horse whilst jousting, which inflames an ulcer in his leg, which leads him to be very irritable. And it also leads to his obesity. In 1536, he has a waist of 37 inches. Five years later, this grows to 54 inches. 